All right, I'm super excited today to be talking about tree climbing spurs. Uh, I had gotten a question about using tree climbing spurs properly, and so I'm gonna try to give you uh, some of the tips that I've found the most valuable for uh, using spurs properly and effectively uh, to get around while you're doing removals. And these are for removals only. Do not be pruning with spikes. They're just for climbing trees that you intend to remove, not for living trees. Well, unless you're removing them and they're alive. But uh, before we even talk about any of the technique, I just want to do a quick intro to go over the spurs because there's, there's a lot of different spurs out there, a lot of different things that can make them more comfortable or easier to use. But uh, for the most part, when it comes to pads and other things like that, the best thing for you to do is to go find a tree climbing shop so that you can try on different pads and different shanks to see what works for you the best. The only thing you're not gonna be able to try out in the store is different spurs but you can buy replacement gaffs so you can try different spikes if you don't like the ones that come with your spurs so uh i personally like these velcro style ones they go on and off pretty easily but when you first get a pair of spurs especially if they're used ones you just want to go over them and make sure that everything's okay to use because these are not technically a form of life support. You do want to be able to trust them because it would suck if they fell apart on you in the tree and you fell or something like that. So check the shank and everything for any cracks. Make sure there's no bolts coming loose on the replacements for the gaffs. And if you're changing them, make sure to follow manufacturer specifications and lock tight them or do whatever you have to do properly. And then also inspect the hardware that um, holds on the uh, adjustable part of the shank. and. When you're putting on a new set of spurs for the first time, you want to make sure it's adjusted properly for you. Uh, to size that, you're going to make want to make sure you have the, the shoes on that you're going to wear when you're spiking. And the, the taller you have them, the more comfortable they're going to be. So you want to measure it out so that the top of the spur pad is about two fingers or one inch from kind of the mobile part of your knee so that it's staying on your shin. If it's up too high, then it's going to impede your movement when you're in the tree. But if it's too low, it's going to put too much pressure on your shin and it's going to be uncomfortable. So that being said, just real quick, once you have everything adjusted properly, uh, then when you're ready to go put it on, I just, there's two different ways that you can put on uh, tree spurs. And that's for tree spurs specifically. When you're climbing with pole spurs, there's kind of only one way. But when I have these longer spurs on, the way I like to do it is... Put the strap on nice and tight and I honestly feel like these stay on better if I have a long enough strap that I can go under the spur like that and then strap them in nice and tight I find that it moves around a little bit less on me and it's a little bit more comfortable it's less pressing above my ankle I kind of like how it keeps it down there but when you have pole gaffs, those are too short to do that with. So you just kind of have to wear them the normal way, which is just, oh God, really over the spur like that. But I feel like that adds a little bit more movement that I don't like. When I have tree spurs, I prefer to put it under the gaff, but pole gaffs move around less on you anyway, so you don't need it up above there like that. But what I'm gonna recommend is if you're able to, if uh, you're buying the spurs yourself and you're not given them by an employer, I kinda like for, it'd be nice for new people to be able to climb with pole gaffs for the first time, because as you'll see in the video, I'll be climbing with pole gaffs, but they're a lot shorter, so they're a lot less intimidating. You don't worry that you're gonna spike yourself and they're much easier to balance on, but they don't work as well in thick bark trees. But when you're, when you're a new climber, you're not gonna be climbing in very big trees and usually they're gonna have thin enough bark that pole gaffs are gonna work fine and they are replaceable. So when the time comes that you wanna move up to tree gaffs or you need tree gaffs, you can just pop out with this one, only just one bolt and slip in a new set of tree gaffs so that uh, you're ready for some thicker bark and bigger trees. But when you're just starting out, those are good training wheels to climb with pole spikes. A lot easier to balance in, and they're just all around a little bit better for beginners, a little bit more comfortable too. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into some tree climbing. All 
All right, so now that we're getting into the actual spiking, the next thing I'm gonna recommend is make sure you have the right shoes. So I'm wearing cowboy boots. Those aren't <laughs> the most <laughs> typical tree climbing shoe. Maybe you're gonna wear like a work boot or like a hiking boot. The only thing I would recommend you not do is wear something like a concrete boot, like a wedge style boot with like those white soles because you need something for the spur to sit in. You see, I got a block heel on here. So the spur is gonna stay in the arch of my foot. If you got something with a flat sole on the bottom of it, the spur is gonna slip off of your sole if the strap's not tight enough. And that just gets really uncomfortable if you're wearing like flat rain boots or something like that. You need to have something on the bottom of the boot that's gonna keep the spur in place. Otherwise, you're gonna have a lot of problems. Now, once you put your spurs on, I would say the first exercise you should do is when you're spiking up a tree, try to pick a smaller tree, something that you can fit your arms around comfortably around maybe that this is this is really small but maybe something more in that 12 to 16 inch diameter range uh, I'm just doing this one because it's a little ash tree that's gonna get killed by the emerald ash borer soon probably so uh, sorry pal you're gonna be my little donor but you know OSHA says you got to be tied in if you go higher than six feet uh, so for this first exercise, I'm gonna recommend that you stay under that six feet, but don't tie in, you know? <laughs> you can tie in, but basically what I'm trying to show you is the biggest mistake most people make is that they stay either too close or too far away from the tree. So do if you're on a smaller tree, climb like you would climb with your hands. I'm keeping my body mostly in line. I'm not squatting out like this. I'm not like standing way up straight into the tree because especially with an ash tree, trees that are super peely, if I'm too straight up and down, I might gaff out. These spurs are sharpened properly, so it's not gonna peel, but sometimes ash trees can get super peely. And if I lean forward, my foot might slip up. This one's behaving pretty good and these pole spikes do a really good, a really good job of not popping out. So. The first thing you're gonna do is just, just go up and down, stay less than six feet up so you know you don't hurt yourself if you fall. You can even stay only a foot off the ground. But you're gonna to try to keep yourself straight up and down and just, yeah, kind of leaned out a little bit, not out in too close that you'll slip out and can't even make it. I can't see what I'm doing when I'm making a step. I like to watch my feet. So I'm keeping myself mostly straight up and down and uh, Basically the thing is, if you're in a tree where you are slipping, you can lean a little bit further out because the farther out from the tree you are, the more pressure you're gonna put into your spikes, but also the more pressure I'm putting into my back right here. So that's really, really uncomfortable. So you, you don't wanna be this close to the tree because I can't work, I can't, I can't cut with the saw this close to me. And I also might slip, but I don't wanna be so far away that my back's just killing me you want to be kind of somewhere in the middle somewhere where your hands are just kind of reaching the tree nicely and you're nice and straight up and down you're not squatted out like this and you're not straight in like this now the next thing we're going to do i'll put my buck strap on now is um usually when you're going a long distance up the tree you're gonna uh you're gonna have your buck strap a little bit looser so it can be moved up and down now the most tempting thing, thing to do when you're a beginner is to put your buckstrap up way high above you. You feel a little bit more secure doing that, but in reality you can just roll and slip down the tree and scare the shit out of you. So what you're, what you're gonna do instead is when you're working, like when you've stopped moving, keep your buckstrap exactly level with you. Don't put it up way high above you because it'll roll down and scare you. And you're a li little bit, pulls on you a little weird if you have it low. It's gonna be the most comfortable just straight out 90 degree with your harness. So keep that in mind when we're going up, we'll give ourselves just a little bit more slack. And with thin trees, what you can kind of do is hold, and a lot of trees, just hold the buck strap right by the tree so you can brace yourself with your hands against the tree, but you're also using the rope to hold yourself into the tree. And uh, if you're having a really hard time balancing, Something else that you can do that I do a lot if it's a tall popple tree and it's moving a lot and it's hard to balance is I'll just brace myself with one hand on the tree 
So I'm just balancing with a hand on the tree like I'm free climbing it. And then I'll use my other hand with just my thumb through the rope around the back side of the tree. Now try not to pinch your thumb if you weight back into it, but just kind of advance your line like that. So I'll just put my one hand up and my other hand will follow me up. And see, it's nice, nice and easy to tend on a small tree like this. It gets a little bit harder when the tree gets bigger, but then it's easier to use two hands and go up like that. The other thing is once you start getting quite high up, especially on thin trees, uh, you're going to want to involve a choker just in case you slip. Because if I slip right now, especially in a popple tree or something with really smooth bark, there's nothing that's really going to catch me on the way down. Eventually when you slam, yep, because see, I'll just keep slipping down the tree like that. My buck straps not going to catch me. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our climbing line. This is just set up for double rope. I just have a hitch climber pulley with a prussic and uh, just a spliced eye with a carabiner on the end. What I'm going to do when I'm going up is set that above my rope, clip in my climbing line, and when I'm moving a lot, I'll leave a little bit of slack in here. Otherwise, I won't be able to advance it. It'll be too tight on the tree. But this, is, this has saved me plenty of times when I've slipped. Now, to advance this nicely, if you just kind of let it sit on top of your buck strap and kind of open it up, then you can advance it pretty easily. And you can come down just the same. And then when you're ready to work, I like to move my buck strap above that and then tighten this up because I like to work above my buck strap. So I don't like to have this rope above my buck strap in the way. So I'll put it back down there a safe distance away. Keep them far apart so that there is some redundancy if you were to cut your, cut your buck strap with your line. But now since I have it there, if I'm going up this tree, if I'm going up this tree, and I slip. Now my climbing line will choke around the tree and catch me. It's, I've taken more bigger and less graceful falls than that and had this thing all loose and it still just grabbed right, well it didn't there, but grabbed right on and kept me from sliding all the way down the tree, which is super nice. Uh, the other thing that's really useful about this, now this tree is a little bit too small to do this, but with bigger trees with a hard lean, uh, usually you're going to be cutting, you know, say you're letting it fall with the lean, I'm going to be making my notch over here. So I'm going to be on the back side of the tree, I can't see my notch. So it'd be nice if I could be sideways, but if it has too hard of a lean, I don't want to fall underneath and have a hard time getting back up on top because it's really easy to gaff out when you're doing that swing back around to the top of the lean. So what I can do is if I put my carabiner around to the front and girth hitch it down real tight like that and then tighten up my climbing line as much as I can. Now, when I lean around, this tree's too small so I'm swinging around to the front anyways. But now when I lean around, I'm kind of sitting back into my climbing line around the diameter of the tree so it's kind of pulling me back to the top so I'm not being swung all the way underneath like this. I can kind of sit uh, perpendicular to the lean and now I can make my notch and see exactly what I'm doing and since I'm not stuck under here like this I can just swing back around pretty easily and uh, get ready to make my back cut. But that is super handy. It's a really great trick. Uh, if you need to lean over to the other side, just, you know, flip your carabiner the other way around the tree. Swing around to the front, tighten it up. And now I can lean to this side to make my notch and not fall around wah, to the underside of the tree. So that is all super handy. Uh, what else was I going to say? So Okay, so 
Something else that's really important is when you're spiking up a tree with your climbing line on there, like a choker like that, uh, you don't want to spike your rope because your spikes are sharp. You could potentially damage your rope and uh, cut it, and now you got to replace your rope, and you can't use that section of the rope when you're working and descending, which is even more upsetting if you have a nice spliced eye on the end of the rope. So there's a couple things you can do to make sure that you don't spike your rope. Uh, one of those things is if you have just a spare carabiner or uh, or like another tool carrier on your harness, you can just clip the tail end of your climbing rope right there so it stays out of your way, dangles away from your legs when you're climbing. Now with a clip behind me, now when I climb up the rope doesn't hang down next to the tree, it hangs out away from me so I'm not going to step on my rope when I'm going up and down. Something else, I don't know if you would like this or not, but this is something I did for a long time with these spurs actually, was I would put a carabiner in this little key ring that holds the, uh, the strap to the lower part of your spur, and then I would clip my climbing rope to that. So it would just be kind of attached to my heel and it would keep it away from my instep where my spike would be. But now the way I typically do it is I just clip it to just put like even just a cheap carabiner. It doesn't have to be a life support carabiner. Just something your climbing rope fits in. Just clip it to your harness so that your, your tail dangles away from you behind you like that instead of down next to the tree where you can step on it. Something else that's really important about climbing a tree is when you're climbing a tree, even the most straight up trees will at some point have some kind of perceptible lean to them. This tree, it's pretty easy to see that it leans that way. And the easiest way to climb a leaning tree is going to be to be on the back of the lean. Now that means you have to balance. If you start to swing to either side, you're going to fall underneath the lean. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit harder. There's a potential for a fall there, but it's way, way easier on your feet because now I'm basically standing straight up and down. So there's less pressure on my shins. I'm not way out here like this. And if I were under the tree, now I'm hanging way out here like this. This is putting a lot more pressure on my back. And I'm also putting a lot more pressure down into my spurs. And it's so much more work to go up underneath the tree like this. So when you're climbing a tree with a lean, you want to stay on the back side of the lean. Because it's, it's easy to calf out trying to get back on top of the lean. So you want to do everything you can to stay on the back. And one last thing I'll mention, but right now I can't really demonstrate it, is uh, something I see a lot of new climbers do that is done in removals. I mean, you're not doing this pruning, uh, so it's kind of involved with uh, using climbing spikes. But it's really intimidating to work, especially a tall, skinny tree uh, without any branches on it you know you start cutting all the branches off and all of a sudden you're left with this pole and you're like oh my god I'm terrified I can see right down to the ground especially one with a really hard lean it's nice to have those branches to balance on because it helps you kind of stay upright instead of just trying to stay on the back of the balance beam uh, it's really tempting to cut off part of the branch and leave a stub now I really prefer not to do that because when you leave a stub now you've just created like a shank that like you could fall into and potentially injure yourself. So I'm gonna say these are my guidelines for, for leaving branches when you're climbing a tree. A lot of people who are more talented and have better balance than me will just go the route of just leaving no branches. They'll take everything off. Uh, but I, I like to have a little something to balance on. It keeps you more comfortable, makes it a little bit easier to position in the tree. So these are your things. First. When you're climbing the tree, if it has to be rigged or you have to throw stuff in a direction, say I have to throw things to the left of the tree, then what I'm going to do is when I save branches, I'm only going to save branches on the right of the tree. Just having one branch to stand on on the right of the tree and then having my spur in on the other side is going to be plenty of balance. It's going to make it really easy for me to not flip underneath the tree and to stay on the back side of the lean. The second thing is I'm going to cut off all the branches that poke out towards me on the top side of the lean. Uh, I'm going to do that because those are the ones that are going to injure me if, my, if I fall. If I leave a stub poking out like this 
and I slip and fall and go head first down, chin down onto that, that's really gonna hurt. And it's, and it's gonna injure you and that's really, really gonna suck. So if you're gonna leave a stub, you wanna leave it on the underside of the lean and preferably not a stub at all. So if I'm leaving branches on the right side, I don't leave a stub, I leave the whole branch because with the whole branch on there, I'll run into the whole branch and it's not gonna stab me. Now, the caveat to that is that things like popple branches, quite large branches even, can break rather easily. So I've had an issue where I tried to leave a popple branch sticking out to the side like this, and uh, I made a mistake. I was, I was grabbing the top as it was coming down and I was gonna throw it, and I fell to the side of the tree and kind of gaffed out uh, trying to catch the branch. And the branch I was leaning on, which actually was coming out towards the top a little bit, snapped and then like like kind of started to stab me in the chest as I was leaning into the tree. So you got to make sure it's a sturdy enough branch that it's not going to break and shank you if you do something like that. So don't get stabbed. Don't make yourself get stabbed by the tree. And the other thing is don't leave every single branch. I'll see some people like climb a tree and they leave every fucking stub on the tree so that they can walk up and stand on that thing. Don't do that. You don't need every single one of those. You need maybe one every two feet. I leave one maybe one every four feet or every three feet. Uh, just one branch if it's like a really bad hard leaner. But you just got to think strategically about it. You don't need to keep all of them. And the more you keep, the harder it's going to be to get stuff to fall down to the ground when you're rigging or throwing. And uh, it's just a real pain. So think smartly about it. Don't injure yourself and don't get in the way of being productive. You got to Keep your balance, but there's a balance in keeping your balance. So don't leave too much of that stuff, you know? Just be careful and have fun out there, you know? Get your spikes on, get to some trees that, you don't do this on trees that are alive and you're gonna leave or whatever. This is kind of our practice area behind the shop. We just have a bunch of black ash trees and popple that, you know, they're not super high value trees. They're just kind of brush. So we practice on these trees with new people and, uh, yeah, so don't just go to a public park and start spiking up trees and damaging trees like that. These are fur removals. You do not use these to prune trees or trees you intend to leave alive. They leave very hideous marks, especially if it's a thin bark tree like a poplar or a birch. If you do it on a birch, it looks like footsteps all the way up the tree for the rest of the tree's life. So don't do that. If for any emergency you had to descend from the spar, if you got injured or something and you need to get to the ground quick, uh, you can't really, you wanna do a girth hitch like this because it's a really bad idea to double rope down over a small stub or something to get down the tree. Especially if you have all the branches off, you can't really double rope down unless you have a sling to put around the tree or something else to create a false crotch. But the way that I would recommend is if you have a situation like this where uh, you have it girth hitch to the tree and you just have a standard uh, double rope setup going where you just have a prussic on the rope, you won't be able to descend on just the prussic. So you have to introduce some friction ab above the prussic somehow. Uh, one way that I can think of that you would do that in an emergency would be uh, if you sit back down into your, into your rope. So now I'm waiting this rope. Uh, I'm gonna switch my lanyard over to be on the same line as my climbing line. Now, this is a regular carabiner, it's not a snap hook. You would kind of need a regular carabiner to do this. But uh, I'm gonna stand up into my line and take some weight off and then create a munter. And then I'm gonna sit back down and tighten this up a little bit and then lower myself into that munter. So now I have a self-operated system if you were confident in a real emergency, you could do just a munter with a regular carabiner without a second hand like this uh, and just have someone uh, back you up from the ground. But this is a way that you can get to the ground quick on a single rope system without any kind of extra fancy equipment. I know this is fancier shit, but like just with a regular Prussic lanyard or Blake's hitch lanyard system, if you had a a big enough snap hook or a regular carabiner on the end, you could just put it on your bridge and throw in a munter like that real quick so that you could descend in a controlled, protected manner in an emergency if you needed to get to the ground quickly. So that's a great option for you if you find yourself in that situation. 
Uh, but yeah, always, always keep your escape route in mind and make sure to think everything through. One last thing that I'll leave you with, with the technique of climbing a tree, is there are certain trees that will want to grab onto you. So especially if you're a heavier person or things like that, there are trees that will want to grab your spikes. So my biggest recommendation for that is uh, what I do is um, especially like spruce trees or some other really rotten trees, they'll really want to grab on your feet. So the way that I try to avoid that is like you'll feel it, you'll like pull up and it'll feel like it's trying to pull your boot off, like you got stuck in the mud or something. So the way that I recommend trying to avoid that is if you're really getting stuck in a tree. So usually when I spike, I'll spike in and then bring my instep in to balance against the tree. And then when I come out again, I'll actually like twist my foot up and out like this. So I'm rotating it like 60 degrees and pulling out. And I think that rotation helps a lot with breaking your spike loose if you're in a tree like a spruce tree and it's really, really grabbing on your spurs, especially if you have longer pointing your spurs. Uh, so if you're having that issue, try to rotate your foot a little bit instead of just pulling it straight up and out of the tree, you know? And also, make sure you have sharp spurs. Look at the guidelines for how to sharpen them properly if they're not sharp, but uh, sharp tools are just essential. You're doing yourself and your clients a disservice if you're not using the best equipment. So. Take care of your equipment because you should not need to sometimes dead tree, your, tree, your spurs are duller. You really got to step into the tree. But in reality, if you have good spurs on things like an ash tree, if you have good spurs on most trees, it should look as easy as if you're just walking up the tree. You should just be able to just step into it. I'm not stomping into this tree. I'm just taking nice steps. I'm just going right up this thing. No problem. So make sure that your equipment is in the proper condition. And if you're looking to test your spurs on most trees, if uh, the spur is properly sharpened, you should be able to do the thing that makes most people gaff out. But if your trees are, if your spurs are good and sharp, you should be able to get them just flat up against the tree and not have them pop out. Even though you want to spur like this most of the time, they should be secure enough that when you lean in like this, they don't pop out and shoot out of the tree. But yeah, be careful out there. Practice low and slow. Make sure to, you know, if you see a tree, uh, something that's tough when you're working with a company is if you're a beginner and there's other climbers there, you don't always get a lot of chances to climb. So, you know, sometimes ask if there's an opportunity where it would be easy to bucket the tree, but it would also be a great climbing or a great training tree. There's not a lot of stuff to hit. It's a fairly easy tree to climb. You know, make sure to try to make those opportunities for yourself so that you can get better and learn quicker and ultimately be safer out there. So just try to make those opportunities for yourself. Practice low and slow and uh, practice as much as you can. This is probably one of the hardest things about tree climbing. All of the other rope access stuff, I think pales in comparison to how difficult it is to get used to climbing on spurs and how to get good on climbing on spurs. It's, uh, it's probably the most difficult thing that we do other than being really good at felling a tree or something like that. So it's, it's a really great skill to have and it's a difficult skill to develop. So you gotta spend plenty of time doing it and I hope that you're able to have a lot of fun and uh, a good time doing that. Uh, thank you so much for watching and let me know if you have any questions. I look forward to uh, seeing them and uh, yeah, I hope that you were able to learn something from this video and if there was something I missed or maybe I misspoke about, make sure to let me know and I'll be happy to address it. But thank you so much again and I can't wait to see you in the next video.